you worked in sales, you specialise right now, you've got Silver Birch Estates. It's about the relationship building for me, because I probably would have made a lot more money doing sales, there's no doubt, with the commission. It's all like nice, luxury items. Yeah, I mean, it didn't start that way originally, yeah. but for me, I saw the bigger picture back then, and I was like, I really want to build a client base. Yeah. So we went down to meet you at this address that you gave us, and we got there, and I was like, damn! <laughs> I was like, damn, that house is nice. Talk to me about service accommodation. Post-COVID, it slowed down a little bit. Obviously, there's huge demand for this area yeah. all the time. But in comparison, like, it did slow down. What was the biggest hardship and what advice would you give to someone wanting to start their own business? Layla, great to have you on the podcast. Thanks for having me. We're here. So me and Amanda, we love luxury houses. Do you find it weird that we rent multiple nice houses no like lots of homes no i totally get it <laughs> yeah. so many yeah so many of our clients do the same really? thing yeah because most things i think would find that bizarre you find it a bit sketchy almost like what are you going to be doing with that yeah can we rent this through our company and we just want it as a yeah when we first met you i was you know mainly because we weren't speaking to you firstly it was one of your people yeah that reached out that's what sketches us out <laughs> really because we want to talk we want to talk to the people oh wow but then we Maybe we need to learn from we, that. we yeah. did yeah introduce no, ourselves it first definitely we just want to check you're human yeah. <laughs> you are who you say you are but once once we met you you know we everything you were saying on the so table. we love luxury properties and you worked in sales, you specialise right now, you've got Silver Birch Estates? So, yeah, the Silver Birch Agency, Latin agent. How many people work within the company? So we're a really small team, really small team. It's me, um, Stephanie and Georgie. So wow. we keep it small. Yeah. Well, you're doing a lot, like we see your signs everywhere. I know, yeah, when you drive into the area, yeah. you see you're everywhere. I think like, you're really well known in this pattern. Yeah. You know, Piers, we was with Piers yesterday. Yeah. I think you're quite well known. Didn't you move out of the area because you were almost too well known? Yeah, very wow. much so. There was just, well, I lived here for like eight years and obviously as the brand has grown and we have predominantly gone into the luxury market, it's impossible to have any privacy. I'm no celebrity by any stretch of the imagination, but people do know who I am. Yeah, so, of course. small community. Yeah, you go for a yeah. drink or you have dinner, like you're going to be, it's like- Now you know how I feel. Time. All the time. Well, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wherever so. I go, the same old story. But I want to come back once you're out of out out of town for like twelve months. Come back where? Here. Yeah. I want to come back. There's nowhere like this. So, so yeah. yeah. Wow. So insane. we're in Sandbanks. Mandy, tell us about Sandbanks and why we love Sandbanks we so much. We love Sandbanks because of the beach. It feels like you're abroad when you're yes. here. It's, when it's sunny like no this. No one knows there's white beaches like this in yeah. the UK. No, and no the beach is it. so quiet, whereas when you're in Bournemouth, it's yeah. so busy. Here, it just seems like a little secret nook that not many people yeah. know about. Yeah. So that's Don't, why we Maybe we shouldn't do this podcast. Yeah, no, we shouldn't. No, but it's all... It's, it, it, it's, it's all, a special yeah. place. But that's where you gave it's your gorgeous. notice to me, and uh, I'm yeah. trying to keep you here. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about <laughs> that. Let's talk about that. So context is we've been renting this house which is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, we've we've never filmed in here previously because we don't really, if we've got like a private place, we don't want to film and tell everybody where it is. Yeah. Just because we don't random us coming, looking through the windows no. like that is strange. So we've been renting this now though for like a year. Yeah. A year. Um, and we pay, how much rent do we pay for this house? 6,750. 6,050. Now, we've only been here how many times? Probably like four. Maybe four times. Yeah. So our finance director was like, now Amanda's having a baby. Da, da, da. <laughs> Do you really need that sandbanks house? Because you're very rarely there. So we were like, mm. I know. And at the time, I was busy in meetings in London, whatever. And I was like, oh, probably not, no. Um, so then we came back for the final time this week. We've been here all week. Um, and you, by the way, and your team have been like, how good have these guys really, been? Really, really good. Like, so easy to work with. So lovely. We'll be surprised because every time we come. Yeah, we'll just, just flowers and balloons. Yeah. And so lovely. Lo sweet note. So um, when we when we said we weren't going to be new, um, what you got a note, a, a note from Layla yeah, Direct. Layla, what, what happened? Yeah. Layla, the best situation was just like, oh, really sorry to see you go, but I'd love to do a podcast with you yeah. and Samuel. 
So next time you're in Sandbanks, let me know. And then, you know, that's how it came about. And that is not this podcast. That was no, a different podcast. Yeah, yeah. that was So here's what happened to the yeah. viewers. You don't want me saying, you no. don't want me saying, right. So, so, so we, I'm like, yeah, man, we'll go down, meet Layla, do a podcast. That'll be cool. That'll be nice. It's always good to network with agents and, 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 and she's been lovely. So we went down to meet you at this address that you gave us. And we got there and I was like, damn. I was like, damn, that house. Is nice, right? Beautiful white house, palm trees. I'm like, wow, prime <laughs> spot. And you're there, like, hi, come in, let's do the podcast, <laughs> have some champagne, right? Yeah, I'm gorgeous. like, damn. We walk in, the garden is the beach, right? Literally, literally. I mean, I know now the, the the beach is like a one minute walk away. It's amazing, but this is literally this is on like, the beach, on the beach, your back beach garden. Front. Yeah. I'm like, damn, this house. This is sick, man. What is? I'm falling in love with the house. And then you said, "Yeah, I want to get here for a podcast and for some drinks and networking, but also this house may be coming available for rent soon if you're interested." I'm like, "Okay, I know what's happening." So, what was happening in your head later? What was going on? And what was you thinking about that beach house? And what well, was your reason for getting us there to film the podcast, and not your office? If I remember it rightly, I'm sure that you were interested in another house on the peninsula that you just missed out on. Yes. Yeah. And then you obviously took this house. But it was quite clear from like the initial inquiries that you wanted to be on the beach. Yeah. yeah. So as soon as we were instructed on that, I had you in the back of my mind anyway. But then you gave your notice here and I was like, we don't want to lose you. <laughs> we want to keep you. Oh, man, like you, you are like our client base. We want to keep you happy. So... Yeah, there was a little bit of strategy. I slightly blindsided you. Know, <laughs> I like the style. I, I like it. it. I like it. It was really like smooth, it wasn't was smooth. it? It was so good. Because yeah. the house, as soon as we drove in, we were just like, oh my gosh, it kind of sells it, yeah. doesn't it, immediately? Yeah. It ticks all the boxes for a lock up and leave, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And I just Absolutely. thought about the family and like with the annex. And yeah. yeah it's oh, nice. it's stunning. Well, we, now we need to we need to, we need we need to talk about that off 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 camera. <laughs> yeah, I, I do think. It's nice. Did it work? Did the yes, it worked. Work? Yeah, yes. yeah, hundred percent. And, and also as well, top tip in selling. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> top tip in selling. Yeah, and also as well, like having an escape house. And we've we've got a few, haven't we? Different different places. Yeah. Where, one where we might have like office meetings and staff time stuff. Then obviously in Sandbanks, there's more just for us for, for escape. But yeah, it's it, it's nice. So you're also talk to me about service accommodation because. You've now stepped into that market a little bit where you're doing, you're managing people's properties for short stay lets, yeah, Airbnbs. We're literally just dipping our toe in now, but we'll right. notice like post COVID, the holiday letting market has changed quite drastically. Was it, was it in COVID? I'm, I'm pre. I right. mean, everyone was like capitalizing here. Like, uh -huh. absolutely everybody that had permission was like going for it and achieving well, fully booked. Because we we paid some serious. I know you were telling me. Yeah. I that blew my mind. Did it? But then, like a grand a night. Yeah, and post COVID, COVID, it slowed down a little bit. Obviously, there's huge demand for this area yeah. all the time. But in comparison, like it did slow down. Yeah. And then one of the biggest holiday letting companies here was bought by another on another scale, just as an example. And a couple of our clients that we already looked after were not getting the bookings and that we just noticed that they needed more of a personal service which is what silver batch delivers right, right. so we're a small team but we like can deliver a high level yeah. bespoke service so yeah we we got a handful of clients that just needed like us to step in and just take another look at it like i don't know when you've got a huge level of stock it's hard to give every single property a good level of attention so what we can do is obviously do that you know hit social media and just find other ways yeah. think outside the box of yeah. how we're going to market yeah. the property what's your what passion what's your what's the area that you work in as an agent i mean we cover bournemouth and paul but over the last two years where we have stopped sales we've sort of we've become the predominant latin agent for bh13 bh14 so cool. sandbanks lilypur mm. camphor cliffs and then along the coast so when we go into bournemouth it's it's High-end luxury homes, like yeah. along the nice. coast, we still take on one-bedroom flats if they're special. Well, I see your Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean? they have to be. Well, I see your Instagram. It's all like nice luxury high-end yeah. houses. Yeah, I mean, it didn't start that way originally, yeah. but I feel like you've got to start like yeah. So you start worked. Did you, so you worked as a letting agency initially, but you were just working as an employee. Yeah, I was an employee. Smashed it. 
15 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And 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 you got into sales then? No, I always did lettings. Why always. do you prefer lettings than sales? What, what, what And what, where, where's the money at? It's about the relationship building for me. Because I probably would have made a lot more money doing sales. There's no doubt with the commission. But for me, I saw the bigger picture back then. And I was like, I really want to build a client base. Mm. I recognize like to be the best in your field, certainly here. Mm. People don't like agents that hop hop from agent to agent and do you know what I mean like yeah. I knew I have to build a reputation and the only way of doing that but also being an all-rounder because if if I you know we go and view a property later that's on the market for sale the selling agents are confident letting me go in because they know like I can talk investment I can talk letting yeah I am an all-rounder so I sort of knew that that was for the bigger picture like going to make us a solid contender so, so you, you Lalela's taking us out this afternoon yeah. To go and do yeah. some potential properties, I maybe know. investments or rentals or... See if some bank Samuel will go and <laughs> lily put Samuel. Maybe. It'll be good for yeah. you to explore it. You've yeah. dismissed it, haven't you? Well, man, I'm, I'm open, I'm open. I like, open like I like to be really close to the beach, but then looking at some of the properties in Lilliput. Tell me about Lilliput. What's Lilliput like? Uh, do you know what? It's slightly underrated for people that are not from here. Right. Yeah. But I found so many people that have like lived in sandbanks but then become full-time people do end up moving to like camphor cliffs and lilliput mm. you get a lot more i think a lot more space a lot more square footage but also when you are here full-time it can be a bit overwhelming when we've got all the tourists taking over the whole mm. peninsula and you can't get in and out of your house if you're here as a sec if it's a second home like what you guys use it for it's perfect yeah. because you're prepared you've got your team like yeah. you don't have to worry about getting in the traffic to go get I mean, some if there's, milk if there's, yeah. if there's like sea views and stuff like that then yeah, that's it a big point yeah lifestyle. just seeing the sea when you wake up it's yeah. just like oh it's so, so this nice. is what i want to show you so in lilyfoot you've got the harbor so you're oh. literally on the coastline but you just don't hit that. It depends what you want. It's a lifestyle thing and everyone's yeah. like so different. So what would what would you say to people that are looking at setting up their own letting agency? Because you transitioned from being an employee to a business owner. What was the biggest hardship and what advice would you give to someone wanting to start their own business? Um seriously consider it stay employed and ask for more money. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well yeah, there's truth in that. <laughs> there's a lot in that. I mean, Negotiate you know what? your way to the Mo top and stay employed. <laughs> Most millionaires are employees. Yeah. Yeah. really interesting. 100%. Mm, like, interesting. People think, oh, I'll be my own boss. It'll be really easy. But yeah. actually, it's, it's... Do you know what? Work I'm, harder. I'm like, had I been looked after in my employed position, I'm not sure whether I would have... I'm glad I did. Everything's worked out. Like, this is my dream. And like, I've got the best letting agency in Sandbanks. That's incredible. But, you know, unless you're a business owner you don't realize you guys will like what goes on behind the scenes oh like i'm 24 7 i don't have a holiday yeah. i'm going away next week but it's not holiday i'll be working you yeah know, you need Remain. you need to rent a spillover house your escape <laughs> sandbanks house <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna borrow yours yeah <laughs> so right now we're gonna go then do some properties yes. with layla but layla we just wanted to say thank you we've loved the experience and i know this is not the end this is just the very beginning so appreciate you thanks for coming thank on you. the show thank you thanks guys mm -hmm.